On today's episode, uh, one of my viewers sent me a picture. His name is uh, Chris K. Uh, goes by the handle Hot Gates on YouTube. He asked me if I could add a texture to this eagle picture. I'll show you the original here in a second. Really cool picture of an eagle here. And uh, he wanted me to show him how to add a texture. But I'll tell you, things went a little bit out of hand. And I ended up turning it into a painting. I did add a bunch of textures to it. So Chris will get to see how I added textures to his image. Uh, but this was a lot of fun. I put the artist cap on today. And every time I do that, I get into this really artistic uh phase here where i have to make a piece of art so hey let's get into this uh this one's for you chris and let's get started uh this is uh chris's picture that he sent me and he wanted me to add a texture to it but as i said in the intro i went a little crazy and added some other painterly effects to it and things like that um, hey, by the way, I want to say, if anyone is interested in me editing any of your images, you know, adding some artistic flair to it, like to show you how to do it, or, you know, add textures, or add some painterly effects inside of Topaz Studio 2, just leave me a comment, and uh, we'll work, get that all worked out, okay? Uh, but anyway, here's how we started. Uh, I duplicated the background layer, and then I sent it into Camera Raw, because I thought, Right here in the image, it looks nice, but I thought if I'm going to add texture to it, I want to bring out some of the shadow detail here. So I just wanted to open up the shadows a little bit. So I sent it into Camera Raw and just bumped up the shadows. That's all I did. Move the shadow slider to the right, and that's what I got. And from there, I sent it into Topaz Studio 2. And here we are inside uh, Topaz Studio 2, what I like to call as I say, my creative toolbox, okay? As you'll notice here, I have 15 filters here that I added to this image. Now, they're all shut off right now because I'm going to show you each step along the way in the process. This video is a little bit different today because normally I start out in Photoshop and I uh, send the uh, image into Topaz Studio 2 and work from there and then send it back to Photoshop. But as, as I was preparing for this video, it just got a little out of hand and it kept it kept developing and developing. I thought, there's no way I could uh, show you this in a tutorial. It would take like three or four parts, okay? So what I'm going to do is show you each one of the filters that I used and the adjustments for each filter. And a lot of textures in here. Uh, some AI Remix I think I used in here. I used a bunch of different things. Um, and Topaz Impression, okay? But I had a problem because I started out in Photoshop and came into Topaz Studio 2. So how could I open this back up in Topaz Studio 2? And so then I thought, what happens if I come up to the uh, file menu and I noticed here it says save project. So what I did was I thought, this is cool. I'll save the project. So I clicked save project, gave it a name and saved it out to a, to a hard drive, okay, so I could come back and open it back up again. So what I did when the image was done, I sent it back into Photoshop and added a few finishing touches to it there, and I'll show you after I'm done with the Topaz Studio 2 portion of the video. Let me go ahead and run you through the filters I used here. So the first filter was a texture, so let's go ahead and turn that on. Now we'll open it up here, and... Um, I use this uh, texture here called Backyard Boca. I put it in the Multiply Blend Mode and uh, pulled the opacity back to a 0.68. A couple other things I did was I pulled its detail back just a little bit and took its saturation off because I didn't like this color in here. I thought that didn't really look good. But that's what I love about Topaz Studio 2. You have all this control in here. I went ahead and added another texture, so let's turn it on. Let's open up the texture. I used this texture called Astral Sky. I thought that was an apt name for this particular image. Now, I went through all these, a lot of different textures here, just to sample ones out, ones that I thought would work. I just don't randomly pick a texture. I really work through the filters or the textures. I always want to call them filters. I work through the textures and try to find one that will really work. And that's part of the art in texturing. It takes time. It doesn't happen like immediately. It's not a canned process, okay? Uh, I put this in the overlay blend mode and I sampled and tried different blend modes and I pulled the opacity back to a 0.77. I pulled its detail back and that's all I did to that one. By the way, I want to point out that I pasted uh, the layer mask from the first layer that I copied onto this layer here. Again, so I don't have to keep doing that over and over. But every time you see a layer mask, know that that is that same mask that I copied from the first layer. Some of them are inverted, and I'll let you know when it's inverted, okay? So let's go on to the next texture here that I added. 
Let's open this up. And this one is called Bog Light. That's a cool name, right? Put it in the overlay blend mode. And I, again, I sample different blend modes to see which one is the most effective. And you don't know unless you try them. So please try the different blend modes, okay? But overlay is a really good one to, to use. Left the opacity up full. And did I do anything else to it? I just pulled its saturation back because look at that texture. It's kind of a kind of sepia and yellow, and I didn't want that in because I was looking for more of a sky look, you know, with some blue and things like that in there. Okay, let's open up the next texture here. Okay, so another texture, and this one is called Boundary Bravo. Okay, overlay blend mode again, opacity at 0.56. Um, let's see. Brightened it up a little bit and pulled its saturation back. Again, it was kind of kind of a, well, it has some blue tones in there. Or no, it is pink. When I hover over it, it goes, that's a blue overlay in there. Kind of messes me up sometimes. Remember, there's like an overlay over it. But it's kind of pink, so that wasn't working for me. I pulled the color strength up and put more of a blue cast onto it, which I really love this feature in Topaz Studio too, this color strength. And you can add your own color tinting to a texture, which is really cool. So remember that one. So all you have to do is pull your saturation down, pull your color strength up. And this is basically goes through the different tints. Okay. And you can add as much as or as little as you need on it. The next adjustment is a basic adjustment. Let's turn that on. Let's open it up. The only thing I did here was pulled the highlights back because I thought the highlights in here were getting a little bit strong. So I just used a basic filter to pull my highlights back. Next up, and I hope you're having fun, is a precision detail filter. And the only thing I use this for, notice the bird here, I just add a little bit more uh, detail in on the uh, eagle here. On Chris's eagle, I should say. And you'll notice the overall small detail. Bump that up to a point .22. Gave it a little bit of medium detail. And I believe that is all I did to it. Also, take notice on that precision detail. I used that same... Uh, I pasted that same layer mask. This time I inverted it. So it would add the effect to the bird and not to the sky. Now I added another texture. I couldn't stop, but it's looking pretty cool. Even right there I could stop, and I think that looks pretty nice with that texture just the way it is. Uh, but you know me, i got to keep on going sometimes, and this artist cap is keeping me moving. So let's turn on the next filter. Another texture. Let's open it up here. Um, this one is called Bottle Brush and Overlay Blend Mode. Again, I guess I love that Overlay Blend Mode. It is a popular one for textures. But don't forget to sample the different blend modes. And opacity is at 0.68. So play with your opacities too. Very important for textures. Next, I added another uh, basic adjustment. Let's turn that on. Let's go ahead and open this up. And you'll see I gave it a little extra exposure because I felt that it was a bit on the dark side. Bumped up the clarity, which adds a little bit of extra detail in the, in the textures and on the bird itself. Uh, pulled my shadows back a little bit. I wanted to darken them up a little bit and also pulled my highlights back a little bit more because I don't want this getting blown out in here. At this point, I'm taking a pause and really, you know, like looking at the image and examining it for any issues. I felt that the yellows were a little bit too saturated and I was, I wanted these uh, pine boughs to brighten up a little bit. So what I did was added an HSL color tuning, a really super great filter inside of Topaz Studio too. So let's go ahead and turn that on. And let's open it up and you'll see, uh, and it breaks it down into all these different colors here, right? So I, I went to yellow and you'll notice in yellow, I pulled the yellow saturation back and also uh, took the yellow lightness up. So it's targeting yellow. So it makes my yellows a little lighter and I pulled the saturation back a little bit. Then I went to green because of the pine bow here. And all I did here was uh, took the green lightness and bumped it up to the right and lightened up the pine bow. And I thought that was a, was a nice addition. I really like the way the texturing is on this image so far, but you know, I'm thinking, let's add another texture. I haven't even thought painterly at this point, but I'm getting there. So let's go ahead and uh, turn this texture on the next one and see what it looks like. Okay, so this one's a border. And let's open this texture up here and see. And I use this border right here called Pixel Border. Okay, 
Uh, and when you click on a border, it will automatically be in the multiply uh, blend mode if it's a pre, you know, pre-canned uh, texture that Topaz gives you when you buy Topaz Studio 2. That's provided for you. I pulled the opacity back to a 0.29 and I did a little bit of, I clicked edit and transformed it so it fit perfectly in the edges because it was pulled way in you know, about another inch or so. So I just expanded it out so it gave me less of a border look. And let's see what I did to it. I pulled its detail back because I felt it was too strong. Uh, I left the color the way it was. I didn't touch the saturation. I mean, it was pretty much black and white anyway, so it didn't really affect. The saturation really wasn't really meaning much at all, if anything. So I just took the color strength and pulled it up and I wanted to add a bit of a blue tint to that border. Okay, so then I pulled the color slider, which is your tint range, and I brought it up to the blue tint range. And I thought, yeah, that's looking really, really nice so far. I'm pausing again to look at the image for issues and I recommend that you do that a lot just to see, you know, is it going the right direction? And as you recall, I pulled up some blue, but then I'm getting some purple tones in here. And I thought I saw a little bit of magenta or pink in here as well. So another HSL color tuning filter to the rescue. Let's turn that on. And as you can see, the purple tones went away. So let's open this up and see what I did here. Uh, so I'm using three of the colors in here. I'm using blue. So let's click on blue. I pulled the saturation back on the blue. Went to purples and took the saturation completely off, so I have no purples in my image whatsoever. Went to the magentas and pulled the magentas off, so I have no magentas, and I think that's an improvement. Now, I'm at the point of the creative process where I'm starting to think painterly. And I find through experimentation that whenever you add textures to... Um, images, sometimes if you add uh, some, the, some of the impression filter to it, the textures take on a really nice uh, painting type quality. Okay, so I wanted to see what that would do. So the, again, this is all experimentation. And again, Topaz Studio 2, your creative toolbox. So let's go ahead and turn the impression filter on. Okay, it's not perfect, but I like the direction it, it is going at this point. It's a little bit light, but we'll take care of that in upcoming steps. So let's go ahead and open up the impression filter. I used uh, type 06 as my brush. Left my opacity up full way. I used the number of strokes high. I normally don't use high, but in this case, I tried it and I liked it. Again, experiment. Uh, changed the brush size, made it a little bit larger. Uh, pulled up the paint opacity to make the paint show through a little bit more. Altered the stroke rotation, put it more on an angle, and I liked the way that was looking. Uh, let's see, what else did I do here? I adjusted the stroke width made it a little bit smaller and the length a little wider or longer I should say not wider longer didn't touch the spill the smudge or the coverage and uh, did I do anything I'll open up some of these up no I didn't use color in here this is the same uh, as the HSL color tuning uh, filter by the way inside of the paint uh, filter here did I do anything with the lighting yeah I pulled the contrast back a little bit I wanted to give the image a softer look, so I pulled that contrast back. And I was, and I didn't like what was happening on the eagle, okay? But I liked what was happening on the background. I liked that nice, soft, open background. After fixing that background, now my eagle just looks a little too soft. So to fix that, I added another filter, a great filter called Curves. Let's go ahead and turn that on. See how it just added a nice little bit of contrast on the eagle. And now he just really pops off this uh, image here. So let's open up curves and show you what I did. I just made a little bit of an S curve. I just put a point here, clicked and drug up on the high end of things. And put a uh, point on the lower side of the curve and pulled straight down a little bit. And that adds a nice uh, contrasty curve to the to the image. And I added a uh, the layer mask again and I inverted it to just add it to the eagle. We're almost done. I'm at an experimental stage in my process of creating art right now, and I wanted to see what the AI Remix filter would do to this image. Now, the AI Remix filter takes like different uh, paintings, works of art that were already created, and it kind of remaps your image to those works of art. It's kind of a fun filter. It's kind of hard, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around it, but let me go ahead and open it up and show it to you. Doesn't that look cool? 
Let's open up AI Remix here and see. I used a preset in here called Blue Chalk, and I really like that. And I left it in, you have three style strengths, low, medium, and high. And a lot of times I'm using lower, medium, but I put it on high this time, and I like the look of it. I pulled its saturation back a little bit because it was a little bit too blue. And also I put a layer mask on it and took it off the eagle itself. And so that eagle just really stands out there. And um, the other thing I did was I took its opacity and I, and I pulled it way, way back to a 0.26. Let me pull it up the full way so you can see what it would look like. So you might say, wow, Dave, that looks horrible, <laughs> right? And I did say, wow, Dave, that looks horrible. So I pulled it back to a 0.26. And now it doesn't look so horrible. But this is where the experimentation comes into play. We're down to the last filter. I don't usually use this many filters. This is filter number 15. What I wanted to do with this filter was, and I'll tell you what that filter is in a second, but I wanted this background to be a little bit softer. So I thought, what about a blur filter? So that's what I did. Uh, let's come up to the last layer here, or the top layer, and let's turn it on. And as you can see right there, it just softened up the background. And I did paste that layer mask on it so it would take that effect off the eagle. Because I want that eagle in his, his majestic glory out there with that nice soft background. And it, it just looks really nice and majestic to me. So let's open up the blur filter and I'll show you what I did here. There's two types of blur, Gaussian blur and diffusion blur. And I love the diffusion blur. It just diffuses the background, which is really, really nice. So I used diffusion and I pulled the strength up to uh, 0.54. I didn't touch softness or blur. I left those right where they, where they default at. And that is it. And now I'm going to take us into back into Photoshop. And uh, I'll show you how I finished it up in Photoshop. Photoshop to the rescue. What I did was made myself a blank pixel layer. I'm going to come up to this layer and turn it on and watch these guys go away. What I did there was use the healing brush and just paint it over the spots and they magically disappear. Just a simple wipe over it. it it's a magical tool. And the healing tool in Topaz Studio 2 is awesome as well. For some reason when I was doing it on here, I think with all the layers and all the different filters, because everything... Uh, in Topaz Studio 2 uh, is non-destructive, so I think it was just the way things were interacting with each other, different filters, it could not clean that up. No problem, just a simple fix in Photoshop. And next I stamped all these layers together onto this layer right here. Uh, and it just pulls everything together. And you'll notice when I turn this layer on and off, you see no change, right? And then I duplicated it, and then I sent this duplicated layer into Topaz Studio 2 just to add this picture frame. Now I'll save this image with all the layers intact because if I don't want the picture frame, I can just bring it into Photoshop, shut the picture frame off and export it out to print it or do whatever I want to do with it. Well, there it is, one majestic bald eagle painting. It started out as a texturing uh, thing for Chris and hopefully, Chris, you saw how I textured it, and I really liked the way the textures look, but I just thought I wanted to take it a little bit further, and now we have this painting. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon, and then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it.